Hello and welcome to Amethyst Star Crafting. My name is Jane Allmark and I'm a UK independent stamping up demonstrator. And um, we've been doing an awful lot recently um, in stamping up with um, note cards. Now, um, note cards are, let me get some out, um, you get a pack of envelopes and you get a pack of cards um, there's 20 um, cards and there's 20 envelopes and we've been doing a promotion at the moment with um, hashtag simple stamping. So for anybody who is just starting out or doesn't have a huge amount of confidence, um, stamping up products, you can do simple um, card making as well as stepped up and more complicated and all of those things. So with that in mind, I thought that I would make um, a little box to hold the notelets in. Now, I've seen quite a few boxes and things and various different shapes and stuff, but I wanted something that was reinforced and something that you could add whatever you wanted to the top. So um, this one, I've literally just laid it on is done with the stitched or the rectangle stitched um, framelits and the largest one actually fits perfectly just with a little border on top of this box so you can create something a bit like that um, I've just taken another couple of things so that you can decorate your box as you want I'm not going to show you that but for example here's another one with that largest one and just a border so if you wanted to do a series of thank you cards you can decorate it that way and then obviously tone things in for that um, this one has got the hummingbird so let's have a look at this one um, you could put that on the top Let's put the little hummingbird in where he should be um, and just pop him in like that so you've got that sort of border and you can do cards um, with nothing on at all just as notes that people can send um, there's another idea which is one with a um, birthday so I've just done that like that um, so you can see you can decorate the box however you want it was the idea of it that I wanted to show you so um, the box literally opens like this and so it is just a reinforced box because what I don't like with a lot of boxes are that they're a bit flimsy so if you're wanting to send um, you know to have a nice box you want something that's a little bit stable um, and this one, I think you can probably hold, what have I got? I've got a couple in here. I think you could probably get six in there with the envelopes quite comfortably, depending how much, um, how many embellishments you put on. But uh, as I say, it's reinforced top and bottom. And I sure thought I'd show you how to make this today. And then you can put whatever notelets you want inside and carry on with this hashtag simple stamping. So um, the top and the bottom are slightly different um, they are a quarter of an inch wider now I'm going to put my measurements up on here so you can just see so um, the base let me show you I've made one base because I'm not going to show you um, the idea is exactly the same for the top and the bottom so the base is a piece of um, ordinary A4 cardstock and that's the nice thing so many projects and things use great big 12 by 12 sheets and we don't always have 12 by 12 but we all have or most of us will have some white um, whether it's whisper white or very vanilla cardstock that you can use for this now I have used the um, the heavy the thick whisper white you can use thin if you want because it's going to be reinforced so the base of the box is nine and a quarter inches by seven and three quarter inches and on the nine and a quarter side you're going to score at one inch two inches seven and a quarter inches and eight and a quarter inches and on the seven and three quarter side so the shorter side one inch two inches five and three quarter inches and six and three quarter inches now the lid for this i'm making and we're going to do that one now it is a quarter of an inch bigger 
Now, you might say, oh, a quarter of an inch. Why don't you do an eighth, eighth of an inch? Um, for me, let me get my box out again. What I don't like with so many projects is I see people who are literally just having to force the box in and it doesn't quite fit. I wanted something that was going to lift out very easily. If I decided that I was going to put some DSP all the way around the bottom and the top, it would allow that little bit of extra on there. And it's something that, as I say, will open and close very easily without having um, to sort of force it on in any way. So let's go, um, let's start making the top of this. So we have a sheet which is nine and a half inches by eight inches. All right, so we've got the scoreboard out and I'm just going to make sure that you can actually see that in there. Yes, you can. And so this one, we are going to score this at um, one inch. So score it at one inch, score it at two inches, score it at seven and a half inches, score it at eight and a half inches. So you've got a one inch and a one inch either side, and then you've got the size of your box in the middle. So let's put it on to the short side, and we are going to score that at one inch. We're going to score that at two inches. We're going to score that at six inches. And we're going to score that at seven inches. So they're very simple measurements as well, because again, I find it quite difficult when I'm trying to follow something and it is, you know, seven eighths of an inch and all of that. So I wanted to try and do something that was very simple and something that everybody could have a go at if they've got a scoreboard. So, what we're going to do now is, if you look at this, there are four little squares in the corner. So four little squares in the corner here. And we are going to, I'm going to use our paper snips. Um, it doesn't matter which side you cut up. Um, so you can cut up on the long side or the short side. But what you're going to do is you are going to cut it straight up along here. And if you cut just inside the um, score line, it'll make it easier to, uh, to cut. And then I find the easiest way is to turn it round and we are going to cut down on this piece, across on this piece, and down on this piece and I've tried to make it as easy as possible because again I've tried making lots of different things and I sometimes find it very difficult so we're going to work on the same side so we started on this side so we're going to do exactly the same thing and we're going to cut along this piece here and again I'm doing it inside the score line we can trim it down a little bit afterwards if we need to um, so again, if we come in this way, and this is the way that I do it because I am, I do find them a little bit challenged sometimes with doing some of these 3D projects. And I find that I start cutting in the wrong place and I get myself all confused. So this is the way that I found that was easiest because we want to have a little tab, but we want to cut the other bits away. So that's this one. OK, and then we're going to repeat exactly the same thing on the other side. So if you cut your first line down, the first two lines, and then, as I say, I find it easier for me to turn it this way. And then I know that I'm always cutting it in the right direction. So let's just get that up on there. And it doesn't matter if you're not overly precise in your cutting, because as I said, you can do it, um, you can trim it up a little bit when we put the box together, and I'll show you that in a minute. So again, I'm trying to cut inside the score lines. So do that one. And then as I say, if I turn it that way, I know that I've got to cut down one, up one up. 
and a cross one or you can cut it down that way because you know that you've cut the lines that you need to okay Ooh, just catch that little piece there we go all right so what we're left with is a shape like this let me put it down flat so you can see it a bit easier okay so we have a shape like this and I've got my um, just scratch paper underneath because being white you'll see it so you've just taken these little um, sort of L shapes out of each one of the sides so we don't need those pieces so we can get rid of those okay now we need to burnish and burnishing is really important because it gives us nice crisp lines so I'm going to turn this over and I am going to burnish each one of these lines so I've got my bone folder and I'm going to give it a really good burnish and then I'm going to fold it in on each one of the score lines so as I say burnish it really well we might even need to burnish it again but it's one of those things the more you burnish it um, the better the um, box is going to sit um, it's quite easy to get sort of bendy gappy bits and uh, as I say if you're um, somebody who's made lots of 3d projects you'll probably be smiling and laughing at me but I know there's quite a lot of you out there who really struggle doing these things and you know you'll have a go um, and, and watch a video and go like oh yes I can do that you start making it and it doesn't turn out it's a bit like cake making isn't it, it doesn't turn out anything like what uh, what you um, what you watched um, so I wanted to try and make something that was very easy and simple um, and was something that everybody would be able to have a go at right now we do need to fold in these little tab pieces so again I'm not even doing my fingers I'm doing it with my bone folder each time because we want these nice strong creases on here so let's fold this one up and we'll fold this one up okay now we're probably going to need some wedges in now cutting wedges when you um, if I if I show you as we fold this box so if we fold this in like this and we fold this piece in over the top you will see on here that quite often you'll find that this little piece just catches so that's why we need to put some little wedges in so um, if you just take from the bottom and you just sort of cut it through like that that gives a little wedge and we can do it on the other side as well um, it doesn't really matter how big or how small your wedges are um, because the little tab is literally just to add a bit of stability for the corner of the box when you put it together so I'm just going to take this out and I'm also going to just take a little tiny snip off the bottom so that there's no chance of that catching when I go to close my box so little piece there now you can do this when you're actually doing it um, right at the beginning but I thought I would show you why um, you put a little wedge in um, because um, I've got quite a few people who I know struggle with uh, making boxes and things like that because they can't sort of get to grips with how you make everything so I wanted to try and do this as simply as I could so that it would be easy for everybody so I've done that now I cut a little piece off of there didn't I not particularly straight let's see if I can straighten that up a little bit like that and we're going to cut just a little piece off of here and just a little piece off of there and just a little piece off of there like that okay so you can see there's some little tiny pieces and this will help when we put the box together for it all to um, stay where it should do so let me um, let me have a look at this again so if we put if we put our corner pieces in like this and we take this up and we just fold it in you can see now that there isn't 
just going to fold that in like that. You can see now that it folds much neater than it did before. It's not sort of buckling over on the top here. So we need to, and I'm going to go all the way around, it's, it's a good idea when you're um, making your boxes, unless you are absolutely certain with how it's going to go together, there's no harm in just giving it a little bit of a trial run. So we know that they fit in perfectly like that. And then this piece is going to come in, says me, I'm just putting that down there. And then this piece will come down in over the top here. Now, what I am going to do is, again, on these end pieces, I'm just going to take a little wedge out of here. Because then when that, in fact, I'm going to do it this way. Then when that closes, it's going to close neater. So we'll take a little wedge out of there. that piece out and we'll take a little wedge out of here and we'll turn it round and we'll take a little wedge out of here like that and we'll take a little wedge out of there and this is all to try and get the box to close as neatly as you can um, and again, you can put as many wedges and things in there as you want. You just want it to close nice and neatly. So we now need to do a bit of gluing on this. So we want our tabs, turn it over. And I'm going to use wet glue for this. And we are going to glue the outside of each one of the tabs. So just put some glue down on there. And then down on this one. down on this top one like that um, paying attention to get the glue right up against that seam line and around the edges of the tab then we're going to turn it over because what we want to do as well is we want as we fold this for it to have some glue on there as well so I'm gluing the inside of these pieces you can put tear and tape if you want as you know I use my wet glue my Tombow for absolutely everything because it works for me so whatever you want yes it's a little bit stickier um, but in reality it gives me a little bit of wiggle room because if I haven't got everything completely lined up I have a few moments before it all dries so um, did I do that inside corner no I didn't let's do this one as well so we're just doing the inside pieces on here. So, um, and as I say, use whatever you want, as long as it's quite strong. I don't think snail would probably be strong. If you still got some of the fast fuse, that's probably quite good. So let's take these little corners and we need to make sure that they're glued up to here. Like that onto that side and we'll take the other side and we'll just pop that bit in and glue that one into position like that okay and then I'm going to do one side in first so I'm going to do this side in like that and just pop that down I'm not putting it down completely yet because then I can turn it up if I need to and then we'll take this one inside and just line that one up. Hold it, whoops, hold it just for a second. As I say, wet glue does take a little second to dry, but then it does allow you a little bit of wiggle room if you need it. And then this little piece up here. And just put that one in flat like that. Okay, so we can get these ones down now. And you can see that the um, wet glue does allow you just that little bit of extra, extra time. So you can then put these pieces in, turn it round and put this piece in. And it opens itself up quite nicely and starts gluing down. Okay, so I'm just making sure all of my edges are nice and neat, which they are. And then we need to just get our bone folder 
and we're going to crease down on the inside and this will help it to adhere nicely and also get a nice reinforced scrap and you can see now that I'm pressing it down that the glue is holding but if I'd needed to take it up and give it a bit of a wiggle I would have been able to do that and you can see we have a perfect inside reinforced so it's nice and strong um, I'm just going to run this down again because as I say wet glue does take a little a little moment to dry but I'm just making sure that I've got it right up into the corners in here all the way round like that and there right so I'm going to take the other piece so this was the lid so the lid will fit on nicely over the top and let's get the other one that I had back. So you have two lovely boxes, which as I say, you can decorate however you want. Now, I will put the measurements down below and also over on my blog, which is amethyststarcrafting.blogspot.com. So you can actually uh, go over there and, um, you know, write all the um, um, instructions and everything down. And I'm just going to, I think this is a very pretty one. I think this would be lovely on top of there. Um, so you can then decorate your box how you want. Um, this one's got a little thank you in on here like that. Um, but the large stitched or the large rectangle stitched framelit dies are absolutely perfect because they go just on top. And then you have a lovely box to hold all your... Uh, um, notelets and note cards and you can make the designs however you want so I hope you found that useful um, thank you so much for watching me and I do look forward to seeing you again bye bye